Good morning. Give them a good morning. 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 <laughs> We're doing a little product knowledge training on with Brandon. Jacob. Jacob. I forgot <laughs> Jacob's name. For those of you that are watching, he's going to explain how clear paint protection works. So we will turn the show to him. All right, everyone. So like uh, Andy just said, obviously with Toyota, with Southeast Toyota exclusively, we use a clear paint product. Um, up until July of 2014, so it's been about a year of full like production on your lots. Um, we were using a different product that was provided to us by 3M, and we made the switch to SunTech, which is what Jacob works for, July of last year. So it took a few months to get it on all the cars that were on your lot, um, but we've switched to a new product, which is actually on this special edition Camry right now. So Jacob's going to go through and just kind of talk through how their product is different, why we made the changes. This is a really good opportunity to kind of play devil's advocate a little bit and kind of ask the tough questions. Um, clear paint tends to have sort of a negative connotation because people have seen older products that you know break and change color and peel and full paint and the product that we use now does not do any of those things so if you have customers who have said things like that to you or you personally have questions about that sort of stuff this is the guy to ask he teaches our text out of the port how to install it on the vehicles he knows everything about it so this is a really good opportunity to just kind of ask the questions that you need Go ahead. Great, thanks. Again, I'm Jacob. I work for SunTech. We manufacture the paint protection film that's already installed here. Um, what we're going to do is basically some product training to give you guys more confidence and just knowledge on why Toyota switched. It's easy to say they switched, but what are the reasons behind it? Everybody coming a little closer because um, most of the stuff you have to look at pretty close. We're getting front rows. This is the new product here, um, and this is what you were getting before. So the first thing we like to go through is just visually. If you look at this product, if you catch it in the right light, you're going to see like a little distortion, some orange peel in this, um, whereas you do not see it in this. So from just walking on the vehicle, first thing, visually for your customer, it's important to, to have a product that's going to protect it from your rock chips and damage, but doesn't stand out. Because the first thing you're going to say to this is, what is that? It doesn't look that good. I don't like it. So this is visually important, number one. And this is in our manufacturing process. The grade of urethane we use, the liners we use, uh, gives us a better finish. Uh, also, once it's installed, which doesn't matter as much to this group here, but for them it's a lot easier to install um, as far as defects. So what that means for you is just a better looking installation, especially on like a, this color or black colored vehicles, you're gonna get less flaws. Your stretch marks, your lift lines, a lot of distortion you would see in the glue with the old product, you do not see here. Um, and as Christian mentioned, kind of the biggest, uh, biggest issues with paint protection film in the industry have been people have seen it turn yellow, um, people have seen it start to crack and dry up and pop into pieces, uh, and then when, once that leads to removal, the issue has become when you're removing it, it's leaving glue on the car, it's peeling paint off the car, it becomes a nightmare, okay? Um, so when we did our product research, product development back in 2011, we wanted to address all those things. So what we're gonna explain is to why our product does not have the issues that this one had before. This one here, it's glue and then it's urethane and that product's done. So the urethane itself is, is exposed to everything and urethane is porous, so what's gonna happen is, is it wants to absorb everything. Car exhaust, gas, oil, brake fluid, windshield washer fluid, car cleaning products, everything that is exposed to this is getting into it. So this urethane is absorbing it, it dries it out, it turns it colors, it starts to crack and flake and dry up. So it looks great at first, but then after six months, year, two years, it starts to break down and get damaged. Uh, with our product, it's the same, break up, uh, same, same breakdown, it's glue and then it's urethane, but we have a proprietary chemical top coat that we apply to the top of the urethane. Um, it's, it's unique to us, we manufacture it in-house. So it's, uh, it's half a mil thick, but it's a top coat. What that top coat does is protect the urethane. So the urethane can absorb all those chemicals and toxins. So it's not gonna yellow, it's not gonna dry up and crack because it has a layer protecting it. That layer is also like a high gloss finish. So what that just yeah. means is that it's like supposed that to really blend with the factory clear coat. Kind of how this pops out on you, but this kind of, you can't tell it's on there. It's, uh, does, that's because it doesn't have that textured look to it and it's high gloss. So it's meant to not be seen. Um, kind of the, some important things about that top coat are the, it's solvent resistant and it's self healing. Is this the old clear paint? This is what you were getting before and this is the new one. It starts right. So it's the old it. whack product. Where's the line? You can't even. Wait, yeah, it's right, it starts like an inch below it right here. Can't even see it. You guys see the clear paint? Can't even see it. Where is it at? 
Right what do you apply? Right this here? The yes. Here's well, there's two packages. There's you get the, the doors, the which do the door edge guards and the cups. That'll cheap stuff. And then you got like a hood package that does hood, fender to match, and line. mirrors, Man, which are all on this one already. Yeah. So we talked about the top coat being solvent resistant. When we do trade shows like SEMA, we like to use paint thinner. We pour paint thinner on a rag and rub it on the product that doesn't break it down. Whereas most of our competitors, as soon as you hit like paint thinner, it turns like milky and chalky. Uh, what we're going to do in person today is use alcohol. Um, of course, we're all familiar. Alcohol is going to dry anything out. So this is kind of like an accelerated weather testing. What's going to happen when the sun beats it up, starts to dry it out in the summer? Uh, somebody take this. All right, now rub it on this product, and you're gonna feel resistance. It gets really dry. Put some force behind it. Yeah, and then put it on this product, and it stays glossy and smooth. Really slick. Exactly. So you know that alcohol is gonna dry it out. So what's gonna happen in a year or two of summers of the summer baking on? This is gonna hold up, and this is gonna slowly start to dry out. Yeah. And well, like I said, we go when we test this in house. We test it against toluene and MEK, which are your harsh chemicals and gas and oil which are real life tests, because that's what's gonna get on it out on the highway, okay? The second thing we like to do is a scratch test, because what's gonna happen, it's about to get cold soon, it's gonna be snowing. They're gonna lay down salt. So salt gets on the car, it gives you those swirl marks and scratches in the paint. Our product, that protective top coat, is self-healing. So your day-to-day -day surface scratches, uh, dirt, salt, sand, ice, rocks, uh, the car wash, those type of things give you the surface scratches. Uh, we're going to scratch both products and you're going to see how this one's going to stay nervous. damaged and this one's not. <laughs> is that Trust a wire me. bristle? <laughs> this is copper and brass. Yeah, it's, it's a wire brush. We're going to wire brush a brand new camera. So we're going to do this. It's going to serve its purpose. It's going to protect the paint, okay? But those scratches are going to be there to stay. So as this gets beat up over time, it's just going to look worse. We're going to scratch this product. Again, it's going to do its job. It's going to protect the paint. And then we're going to use a heat gun, but you don't need a heat gun. This heat gun's going to simulate um, the motor running and the hood being hot. We did a demo the other day in the afternoon outside. As soon as I was scratching it, it was healing away. So this is just for the sun or the motor being warm. You can hold the heat gun on this and it's not going to go away. Again, the scratches went into the urethane. It's there to stay. With this product here, the top coat is going to heal. So your surface scratches, your day-to-day -day type of just beating the car is going to take is going to constantly heal itself just with the sun or the motor running. So the consumer can wow. get the wife's hair dryer and make it correct. Oh, they won't need that. The so you clean, do that. You clean okay. your car. Yeah. You clean your car with a hair dryer. Yeah, yeah. This is just yeah. accelerator. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Would you take a hair dryer and clean your car? Yeah. Absolutely. Will it work on Rhino Liner? He Rhino Lined his truck. Yeah. A Rhino Liner. Yeah. You need clear so paint protection. People. Some people do this with hot water. You could get a cup of hot water and pour it on. It's going to heal it. This is just accelerating, but it's going to constantly heal just from the sun. You know how the hood gets warm when the car runs. Like the other day, we did one outside. Scratched it, and as I was scratching, it was going away. Would it be safe for us to show a customer with a wire brush on a brand awesome. new car? If you do it, it, you get copper brass only. Don't use steel. Steel cuts a little too deep. This is supposed to simulate what it's meant to do, which is your surface abrasions. So steel is abrasive. a little too, abra uh, too abrasive. If you cut it too deep, it will go into the urethane. That's like saying that this would hold up against a shard of metal being flung at the car. You know, it's there to protect your normal everyday damage. Um, but yeah, if you went at it with like steel wire and kind of got into it, Pretty you cool. can't leave scratches okay. in it. But you know, copper or brass, if you're going to get a brush, this will never damage it. Like at SEMA, I'll give this to customers and they really try to dig into it. And you're not going to have any issues using it. So we can't mess it up with copper and Copper and brass, brass no. Uh, so we've addressed yellowing, Seriously. cracking. Uh, bugs. What about bugs? Thank you for your training. So, so as far as your bugs go, the question is uh, with bugs going to be removal. Um, most people are going to find, I think, you, you know, of course it's recommended to regularly clean the product to keep it look, with anything. The more you clean it, the better you take care of it, the better it's going to look. But in an instance where somebody may leave something on here and it stains it, it's solvent resistant, right? So you can take alcohol in a rag and wipe it if you get a small stain on it. Um, in an extreme situation where somebody has a white car and they just didn't wash it for a year and it's got like a little dingy color to it, you can even buff this product. You're going to take off a slight layer of the top coat, but you're going to bring back that little that uh, gloss finish. Can you like mean green or solvents, anything that'll mess it up? No. Customers washing their car? Purple no. power. Purple no. power, none of no, that? No, we put, we put toluene, MEK, uh, acetone, paint thinner and stuff on it, and you're fine. Really? Um, you know, three-year 36 warranty from Toyota, but in-house, we manufacture clothes, guys, in, in Martinsville. It's only like, where are we at? <coughs> yeah, we're like two and a half hours from here. So, you know, our department in Martinsville does accelerated testing for 
um, just heat exposure and different chemicals. Um, we have gravelometer testing where we throw rocks at covered panels and our product uh, protects as well as, if not better than every other product out there. So a lot of people think this product was thicker. It's actually not, it's the same thickness. It's a different grade of urethane, the high gloss finish, and just visually it looks better so it doesn't stand out to you um, quite as much as the old product. What are the chances of this line peeling up and having a like a yellow, reading you know, how stickers on the side of cars get a yeah. yellow film? Well, there's two things here. Uh, a lot of people like to ask, is wax gonna collect on the edge? Yes, I'm not gonna lie to you and say it's not because there's an edge on the panel. But here, 3M's known for their adhesives, right? They have a really, really tacky glue that leads to two problems. There's gonna be drawback on both products over time. The urethane's gonna wanna pull back. That leaves a little edge of glue. Theirs is so aggressive that as that pollen and dirt collects along it, it's almost impossible to clean it. Ours, when you get that pull back over time, the glue pulls back with it because it's not as aggressive. So you're not gonna have the dirt collect along it as, as bad. But if you wax it and you get this on it, go at it with a rag and like some alcohol, which wipe it off. Um, as far as lifting, that's should be slim to none. Like very, very, very rarely should that ever happen. Only situation you may ever see that is if a customer has a stain or leaves the fur dropping on it and they don't wanna clean it. They try to like take a pressure washer and blast at it there's your risk of maybe popping an edge up. But in a situation like that, I think that goes through maybe a, a warranty process. Yeah, I mean, process. in those sort of issues, especially if it's within that warranty period, that's when you can contact uh, me or someone else from SCT and just, we'll get it taken care of. Because the big thing is, you know, we offer this product. It's not offered through actual, like, Toyota North America. It's something that SCT puts on their vehicles. And so it's, it's a really good thing to talk about in terms of exclusivity. And we really try to stand by our warranties. So one thing I know Jacob hasn't gone into yet is the install. So we install this down in Jacksonville at the port where we install all the other SET accessories. And in order for SET to do their own accessories outside of the OEM, the standards that we have to meet are actually better than the factory standards for installation. So when this vehicle got here, this install is absolutely perfect. Um, and so that goes kind of to the quality, but if something happens within that warranty period, or even sometimes slightly after that warranty, I mean, we really want to stand by our product and make the customer happy. I mean, that's, at the end of the day, if something happened that's on us, we will do whatever it takes to make it convenient for that customer to get it fixed. Um, a few situations, like I know we had a customer here that lived out of market, and we, he had to get something done to his truck, and the cup, obviously, the clear paint for the cups was not at the body shop where he lived. I mean, it was like instantaneous to get in touch with Jacob and send that part to the body shop where he lived to get it put on the vehicle. I mean, we'll do what it takes as long as it's through like a preferred vendor that we know is gonna install it to the standards that we require to be able to warranty to work. Um, you know, that's why we try to stick with those preferred vendors based on where the customer lives. Um, another question that you guys asked were, what can get clear paint coverage? So it's different vehicle to vehicle, obviously with body style. But you can always get a hood coverage on a lot of your SUVs and all these, on this Camry too. You get it on the side as well, which is good, right? Because all the gravel and dirt and dust is coming up to the front, so we're protecting the front of the vehicle. Then when you move back, it's always, you can't even see it really unless you're on top of it. But on the back of the side mirrors, there's always going to be coverage Anybody there, which is an option. Invisible stuff. And this is good because right line? Barely see it. It's really good because when people kind of sideswipe the mirrors or scratch it, you know, you're protecting that investment. You go through the, the drive through You have them in the door handles. Pass. Why do you think you have them here? Fingernails, Fingernails rings, keys are in your hands, and like it gets just completely dinged up. Also, Jacob likes to point out that because of this curvature, sometimes it's really hard to fix the paint in that area, even with a buffer, because the space is really small and it's really concave. Um, one of my favorites though are the door edge guards and again you can barely see it unless you're right here But it always goes down the seam of the door And that's really important because parking lot spaces tend to be a lot closer together than they used to be So how many times are you like opening your car door like you this and you're like, like trying camera? to get in and out of your car So your door doesn't yeah. bump the person next to you And so now it's not really as big of an issue because it's not steel to steel with the door, right? You've got like this barrier in there protecting your door, but also the person next to you, which is nice. And then in your sedan, the crash. No, we want to install clear paint here. You really cannot even see it, especially with this lighting. Yeah, on the lip of the bumper, your car, there's clear paint all along here, and you can barely see it. But I like to say this is good for what you're putting in your trunk, but also what you're pulling out. I have dogs. 
And so when I put them in the back of the RAV4 to go to the dog park or the vet or anything, you know, they jump up in here and they scratch this with their nails all the time, but it's not an issue for me because I've got the clear paint there to keep that part protected. The big thing is you want to think about it as like an investment in your vehicle. You get homeowner's insurance on your house, right? Because if something happens, you know, God forbid it burns down, you want to protect that investment. For your car, you get car insurance. But it doesn't cover like the day-to-day -day wear and tear stuff, like your dog's getting out of your car, you opening the door and actually hitting someone next to you, gravel when you're off-road flinging up on your SUV. So clear paint's a really good investment. I always say if you know if customers see it as just an added cost, the value is you're protecting what is for most people the second largest thing that they buy other than their house, and that's your car. And everybody is usually the number one thing when they go to get their new car, they're always usually disappointed with trade value, right? They're always like, how come I can't get more for my trade? How come I can't get more for my trade? And the reality is you have to look at the vehicle as it is. And every, you know, scratch and ding and wear and tear in the body goes into what your trade's going to be worth. So a good example to show the value in this, even if it's just the $200 package that's on the vehicle, is go to like KBB. It's a really reputable site to go to. Put your car in as it is, but do two different scenarios. Do it as if it was bad or poor exterior condition, and then if it was fair or excellent exterior condition. And generally the difference in what your car is worth is two to three thousand dollars, anywhere in there. And that's a lot of money. And if you ask me, I'd rather pay the two hundred, four hundred dollars now, so that when I go to get my next vehicle for whatever reason, I know that I have that leverage there because my vehicle is in a better condition. That's really what you're talking about with people, is just protecting this investment that you've made. So, any questions that you guys, I know he addressed a lot of the concerns people have historically had with clear paint, but is there anything else? You guys want to buy some wire brushes? Yes, go to Home Depot and buy the wire brushes. It's a really good like a Would you guys on here wire brush your car? Would you wire brush your car, Jacob? Yeah, copper and brass. Copper and brass only? Yeah, copper and brass. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people say like those car washes, they don't like to go through the, car, the automated car washes anymore because it always dings up their car. I mean, the parts that really matter, like the front and the sides and the windows, the, you know, the mirrors, because they protrude out, those are generally, generally the places where you get a lot of that ding and damage. And so the fact that you're covering it, especially in a color like this, it's really nice. It looks good. I know one of the only concerns is probably, I mean, we spoke separately as far as removal goes. The old, the old stuff would pop and break apart. And we talked about how we do that as far as it won't dry out because it has a protective layer. But just removal in general, um, with the three and even if it was in good condition, you would peel it off in one piece. But generally, the, the adhesive would separate. The glue was left, so somebody's got to go behind with an adhesive remover or a buffer wheel and get the stuff off. Our product, and we have an office in Arizona, so in Phoenix, our customers are having this stuff on four or five years, getting baked on. If they need it taken off for a body shop or whatever, it's coming off. No glue, no pieces. So it's, it's, it's tested in hot weather environments, and our two biggest markets are Russia and Canada. So it, it's built for extreme cold too. So feel comfortable no matter what kind of weather conditions are going on. It's, it's built to last, yeah. Yeah, like if you get into, and there's like a big scratch mark because you got into like a fender bender or something like that. Somebody thinks you, you can pull it off really easy and just put it back on. And again, you know, if you're having issues finding where do I go when this situation happens, obviously you can contact someone at your dealership, you can contact me or Jacob directly, and we'll just do whatever it takes to get it to the customer and make it really convenient for them to get everything back to them. Anybody got any questions? Nope. Ready? Let's go. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Very good.